Uh, Kayla, I'm wondering uh, what the White House is thinking from the other end of Pennsylvania Avenue. You spend your time largely covering the administration here. Uh, Joe Biden said this week, hey, we had a deal. We shook hands on it. Hmm. And they're not engaging because of that now. Very much so. They are very much been out of this fight. It's so, super different than the debt limit crisis where we saw yeah. them dispatch representatives to the Hill actively engaging in these negotiations day in and day out. This is really a problem that is within the House Republican caucus. Senate Republicans, Senate Democrats, the White House all very much want to fund the government. Mm. They want to continue funding for Ukraine, which is still a huge sticking point yeah. for this handful of conservative Republicans, less than a dozen really, as well as immigration policies. These are things that this very small group wants to see done, and yet the vast majority of Congress and the White House cannot agree on the, to those things. Speaking of Ukraine funding, I mean, you cover the intersection of all of this, foreign affairs, defense, right. also what's going on in Congress. McCarthy had once again had to pull the Ukraine security assistant funding from the defense bill just to get it on the floor. Right, yes. I mean, this has become a ve very much a political football uh, for the House Republican conference. The question of uh, how to fund you, uh, the fighting in Ukraine, when to fu uh, fund it, how to go about that, whether it should be a clean CR or include the, this, this supplemental funding. And I think that that is something that you're going to continue to see play itself out, not just in this shutdown uh, showdown, but also in the Republican uh, primary as we work our way through the, you know, the 2024 election. So, I mean, this fight is, is far from over. It's kind of interesting, though. House members voted on an amendment to remove Ukraine aid from the bill, and they rejected it. Then it was put back in, apparently, by leadership. Does leadership disagree with rank and file when it comes to funding Ukraine? I think if you were to ask Kevin McCarthy or some of the, his leadership team, yeah. they would generally be supportive of funding the fight in Ukraine. I think that they have a restive co uh, conference that they have to deal with. And the politics of this are, are a little bit tricky because you don't want to get out ahead of your members, especially when you're trying to kind of bring everybody together on a deal to fund the government or keep the government open. So, you know, in watching that panel of lawmakers earlier, I was thinking like, you know, here we are again. It doesn't feel like anybody's all that excited about it. I mean, after the debt ceiling fight, this sort of feels like deja vu all over again. God We've knows. been through this before, so it's feeling kind of routine to me. Right, and everyone's asking, how are we back here at okay. Square One? Um, of course, when you talk about foreign affairs, lots of questions about foreign influence and money mm. in our electoral system, and mm. I'm thinking of Senator Menendez today. That's right. He briefed his own colleagues behind closed doors, and this is what Senators Warren and Cassidy, weighing in on Senator Menendez, speaking with Bloomberg earlier today on Capitol Hill, had to say. I believe Senator Menendez should resign um, for the good of the country. Uh, these are very serious charges, and he should step away from the United States Senate. Everybody deserves their day in, trial, their, their day in court. Uh, I do think leaders are held to a higher standard, uh, but Menendez deserves his day in court. It feels like, though, there's been an overwhelming majority of Democrats calling for him to resign. I'm almost thinking, who hasn't yet? But some still want to say, wait, he could still have this job while he, he has his day in court. Yeah, more than half of Menendez's colleagues are now calling for him to resign, including Senator Booker, who is, of course, the other senator of New Jersey. Yeah, that's but today, a big one. Yeah, today we saw him leave this meeting, this closed-door meeting with Senate Democrats, with Schumer, and we saw him basically say, you need my vote. That's essentially what he said today. He knows that the people of New Jersey still want him to cast votes as a senator. And of course, Democrats have a very small majority. If he were to resign, they could very easily lose that. But that being said, if he were to step back, the, the governor, who's obviously a Democrat, would likely replace someone. But right now, with the government shutdown, losing that majority could be very fragile right now for them. Certainly not the only controversy uh, on Capitol Hill right now. We had our first impeachment hearing yeah. today. I don't know how much coverage this got outside of certain cable networks. Well, that was the issue for some Republicans. Yeah. Why are we doing this now when we're trying right. to figure out how to keep the government open? Absolutely. It does seem like maybe a distraction at the moment, particularly when people are crying out, uh, for evidence. Now, remember, this is an impeachment inquiry. This is the Oversight Committee. And uh, Congressman James Comer, the chair, said it would es essentially be a refresher on everything we've learned. We hear from him, Democrat Jamie Raskin, as well, the ranking member speaking at that impeachment inquiry hearing earlier today. 
evidence reveals that then Vice President Joe Biden spoke, dined, and developed relationships with his family's foreign business targets. We're 62 hours away from shutting down the government of the United States of America, and Republicans are launching an impeachment drive based on a long debunked and discredited lie. Dan, to Anne Marie's point, even some Republicans are asking for that document or that smoking gun that connects the dots here between Hunter Biden and the President of the United States. Did we see it today? Well, I think part of what we're seeing now is people are not that into impeachment. Hmm. Uh, when President Bill Clinton was impeached in the late 90s, it was a big deal. Yeah. I remember you know, being in grade school and watching the Senate trial of that, and I covered the last two impeachments of, of uh, President, former President Trump. At this point, this is like becoming something that happens almost all the time now. Yeah. So I don't know that you're even, absent the shutdown, going to drum up a lot of interest in this at this point. Uh, especially when the election is right around the corner. It's depressing yeah. that you were in grade school, but I'll yeah. move on from that. Well, I was just going to say, I actually remember as well wa <laughs> watching those. Um, and it was wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Yeah. And, and, and everyone was, like, fascinated with it. And now it's just another thing so that's happening. So with the happening. Trump impeachment trial. You're right. Too. It feels like, though, this one is a bit another thing happening in Washington. And yes, maybe that's exactly. because how it's happening and what else is going on. Mm -hmm. um, what is the White House saying about this? There's going to be a lot of questions levied at them, especially at Karine Jean-Pierre. In the briefing room, if every day there's going to be a hearing and this impeachment inquiry is kicking off. Well, at first, there really wasn't much engagement on it. But before, it was just talks of impeachment. Mm -hmm. But bringing it back to the shutdown, it felt like McCarthy really brought this forth as another way to make concessions to this very small group of Republicans to please them. And he felt as though launching this impeachment inquiry could give him favor with them. But mm -hmm. a big problem that people pointed out today was none of the witnesses in this first hearing actually have firsthand knowledge of the interactions between Hunter and Biden. They were all subject matter in or experts. And yeah. one moment that really stuck out today is one of the legal professors who were there. He said that there's not enough evidence at this time to actually draft articles of impeachment. And you could notably see some surprise from Republicans in the room. That's not what they that? wanted to hear on the first day of this hearings. Oh. And to your point, if there's a government shutdown, they can't keep doing this. Well, They're going to have to stop for a bit. They have to fund the government mm -hmm. first.